Okay, um, hi, my name is Zane, and today I'm going to present the Work Insider, which is an installed computing system for emerging high-performance drive. And this is a joint work with my collaborators Tom He and Jason Kahn from UCLA. Storage technology has been improved significantly in the last decade. We witnessed more slow of the storage drive, that the drive bandwidth doubles every two years. However, meanwhile, we found the performance of host drive interconnection does not scale well, as we shown in the figure. The existence of this performance gap actually prevents us from leveraging the fast underlying drive, make the advanced storage technology futile. To come back with this interconnection bottleneck, researchers propose storage computing architecture in which host partially offloads computation to the storage drive. One simple illustrative workload for this is SQL Query. So here, we could offload the filtering part directly happening inside of storage drive to take advantage of the ample internal drive bandwidth. And after that, the data volume uh, is reduced so that only less data needs to be transferred back to host, therefore alleviating the interconnection bottleneck. Installed computing is a promising solution. However, designing a full stack installed computing system is challenging. Here, we take a look at every layer of the system stack, and we found that existing work has different limitations at different layer. And here, I'm going to discuss them in a bottom-up direction. So first, in the hardware layer, the installed computing unit has either limited performance or flexibility. Basically, there are two types of installed computing unit, and the first type is ARM-based. It is fully programmable and can um, support general installed computing. However, its com computation capability is insufficient to saturate high internal drive bandwidth, which creates yet another system bottleneck. The second type is ASIC-based, which is a customized hardware designed for specific workloads. It can achieve very high performance on the workloads. However, it is not programmable. This means that after it is manufactured, it can only support those workloads. Second, in the system runtime, some crucial system supports are missing, making them less usable in a practical scenario. Specifically, it has to support protection because we cannot really trust the underlying offloaded uh, drive program, which may issue arbitrary drive accessing requests to access or even manipulate over the unauthorized drive data. And in addition, we need to support virtualization, since in, a pro since in practical, the storage drive is shared among multiple users or processes. And more importantly, a single drive program may not fully utilize high internal drive bandwidth. Therefore, it is preferable to co-locate multiple drive programs simultaneously. Finally, in the program layer, the lack of an effective abstraction. Existing work exposes extreme APIs, which are not integrated with the existing system interface. Therefore, they require considerable host code modifications. To address those issues, we propose a new system called Insider. Before we dive into system design, let's first take a quick overview of approach. First, in the hardware layer, Insider adopts a PGA, which is a reconfigure architecture for both performance and flexibility. And we will show in the evaluation that Insider is able to achieve a major improvement in performance and cost efficiency compared with the ARM-based installed computing system. Second, to provide crucial system supports like protection and virtualization, in the system runtime layer, we build a separate control plane to enforce important system policies like um, permission check and resource scheduling. And finally, in the program layer, we provide the file-based abstraction for installed computing. We expose POSIX like APIs, which are familiar to host users. And in, in the evaluation, we will show that much less programming effort is required. OK, after taking an overview, let's now take a look at the insider system design. So choosing a proper instrument computing unit is crucial for the overall system efficiency. There are so many architectural candidates like GPU, ARM, x86, ASIC, FPGA, it seems hard to make a decision. To guide our selection, we first analyze the requirement of instrument computing unit. First, it has to have programmability to support general installed computing rather than just few specific workloads. Second, it has to have massive parallelism to saturate the high internal bandwidth. Otherwise, it will become the bottleneck of the whole system. Finally, it should have high energy efficiency. That's because storage devices are originally energy efficient, and we don't want to compromise that significantly after introducing the installed computing unit. Based on those requirements, we um, evaluate multi multiple architecture candidates, and the results are shown in this table. Compared with ASIC, FPG sacrifices some performance and energy efficiency. However, it has much better programmability to support general instant computing. Compared with ARM and x86, FPG has better um, parallelism for performance and higher, higher energy efficiency. Streaming workloads like stream matching has plenty of pipeline level parallelism, which is supported by FPG but not by GPU. And in addition, FPGA has better energy efficiency compared with GPU. 
Therefore, in our system, we adopt FPGA as an insert computing unit. Now let's apply it into our system. I will first start with the initial system architecture and keep refining it into the final architecture. So first, let's, pr add, let's add programmability to the storage drive. We add an MPG chip into the storage controller, which is able to perform in-storage computing computation. To leverage the driver programming capability, the host first offloads computational logics by reprogramming the FPGA chip. To retrieve the necessary data, the driver program acts a uh, issue drive accessing request, which contains logical block addresses, or LBAs in short. The driver firmware then translates them into physical block addresses, or PBAs in short, and access the storage unit accordingly. The response data is then read by the driver program to perform in storage computation. And the, finally, the output result is sent back to host through DMA. So far, the design seems to be fine. However, some crucial system supports are missing here. First, it lacks of protection. Since the offloaded drive program may issue arbitrary drive access requests to access or even manipulate over the unauthorized drive data, this can be exploited to compromise the system. The root cause here is that our initial system architecture only contains the data plane to perform installed computation. It does not have a control plane to enforce system policy. At the Insider, we build a separate control plane to support those missing system features. First, we are going to make this drive program compute only. That means it is now no longer able to perform the direct drive access. Instead, this is now handled by, by a newly added um, control plane. Let's now take a look at the refined design. Immediately after offloading step, the host program will provide the file paths of the installed computing input. And here, the host file system will enforce the file permission check and deny the unauthorized access. After that, the corresponding logic block addresses are sent to the drive firmware to issue the actual storage I/O request. These steps are enforced by a trusted insider runtime, which serves as a centralized proxy among multiple, run, um, among multiple host programs. We can further extend our control plane to support virtualization, that is, executing multiple drive programs simultaneously. First and foremost, we need a hardware feature to support virtualization. We leverage partial reconfiguration offered by the modern FPJ chip to, par uh, to partition the FPJ resource evenly into three pieces. This enables a multi-core FPGA. And second, we take back the authority for host program to um, perform a floating, and now it is performed centrally by our insider runtime across host programs. However, having these techniques alone is not sufficient. In addition, since now we need to do co-location, it is important to enforce drive bandwidth scheduling among those running drive programs. Here, we call them drive processes. The drive process has different executing rate at different time, so the scheduler should be adaptive. And in addition, the scheduler should be fair to prevent a process from forcefully occupying the drive bandwidth. However, we actually cannot intuitively do that at the host side inside the runtime. That's, that's because it's too slow. The PCIe ROM trip time is one microsecond. The slow reaction will store the drive processes and increase the buffer size. Therefore, at Insider, we, uh, we make the decision that partially offload the computation, uh, sorry, offload the control plane into FPGA to build a hardware-based scheduler. The scheduler accepts data from, um, accepts drive data and dispatches it to the corresponding drive processes. And by leveraging this dispatch information, it is able to monitor the drive bandwidth uh, consumption of each drive process at real time. The scheduler then provides this feedback information to the firmware to adjust the issuing rates of storage I will request accordingly. For fairness, we designed a scheduling policy that is similar with um, deficit round robin in networking QoS, and please refer to our paper for further details. Finally, let's uh, take a look at Insider's program model to see how we use it. The key idea here is to abstract the installed computation at file operations, which are familiar to host programmers. The user can register a virtual file based on a real file and the corresponding um, installed computing program. The data of the virtual file corresponds to the output processing result of the real file. After registration, it brings the user an illusion that the virtual file actually exists in the file system and can be accessed through our POSIX-like APIs. This abstraction is simple but effective. 
One simple example for this is machine learning. So usually people will first apply a feature selection algorithm to prune the real data and then feed it into the training algorithm like SVN. And with virtual file abstraction, it is easy to implement an insider. So first, user will register a virtual file called post file based on the real file and the feature selection program. After that, the user mostly doesn't need to change the existing SVM code. He only needs to pass the file path of this post file into SVM function, and everything can work smoothly now. After introducing the design of Insider, let's now go through the evaluation. We build an installed computing um, drive using a PCIe-based FPGA board. The board has, um, this, the, this table shows the evaluation setup. The drive has 64 gigabytes capacity, 5 microsecond accessing latency, 16 gigabytes sequential bandwidth. We conduct experiments under both PCIe Gen 3 times 8 and times 16 settings, but in the following, we will only show the resulting X8. The host file system we use is XFS. This table shows applications used in the evaluation, as well as their development effort. All code is written in C++ here. On average, each application takes tens of lines of host code and hundreds of lines of drive code. We also show the development um, time in terms of person day, which ranges from two to nine um, across applications. To make a comparison, we also show the development effort of an existing work. As we show in the figure, it takes thousands of lines of code and over one person month, um, even for implementing simple operations. Next, I'm going to compare Insider with an ARM-based insert computing system by replacing the Xilinx FPGA chip into ARM Cortex-A72. All other system components are remain unchanged. The figure shows the result of throughput comparison. For ARM-based solution, we showed the performance of using one core, two cores, three cores, and four cores. Here, we assume a perfect inter-core parallelism, so the multi-core result is projected from the single-core result simply by multiplying the number of cores. Compared with the four-core case, that is orange bar here. Insider, that is green bar, is able to achieve 12x performance on average. And the speed up varies across applications because different applications has different computation intensity. KNN is the most computing intensive workload here, and Insider achieves 58x performance. SQL Query here has the lowest computation intensity, so Insider does not have any performance gain for this case. In addition, we show the maximum drive bandwidth using this horizontal red bar. And we can see that Insider can actually saturate the drive bandwidth for most cases, thereby achieving the optimal performance. Next, I'm going to compare their cost efficiency. Here, it is defined by throughput per dollar. For fair comparison, we, showed the we use the wholesale price in the evaluation. Xilinx RDX 7 FPGA board takes, sorry, FPGA chip takes $37, while ARM Cortex A72 takes $95. The results here are shown in, the results are shown in this table. Insider is able to achieve um, cost efficiency ranging from 2.5x to 149x. And on average, Insider is able to achieve 31x cost efficiency. Besides, our paper offers more details on evaluation. This includes Insider versus the original host-only architecture, analysis of APG resource utilization of implemented applications, and the evaluation of Insider's bandwidth scheduler, and so on. So definitely check our paper for further details. Finally, let me conclude the talk. In this talk, we observe a data movement warp between host and, uh, host and drive. It prevents end user um, from leveraging the advancing storage technology. To cross this wall, we present a new system called Insider. It achieves three properties. First, Insider achieves high end-to-end -end performance and cost efficiency. Second, Insider exposes a simple but effective abstraction for installed computing to reduce the whole site programming effort. Finally, its control plane design enables protection and virtualization for a shared executing environment. With this, I'm happy to take any question. Hi, uh, Mark Silverstein, Technia. Uh, great work. I wonder, um, two, two questions actually. First, uh, where does the difference in the source code, the amount of source code between Willow 
and uh, and your work come from. Uh, that's number one. And number two, uh, I wonder if you have the evaluation of uh, these workloads compared with regular CPUs, not in storage. Yeah. Um, so for the cross first question, because um, Willow is not open source, so we actually could not um, get it tried to implement our workloads. So actually, we just take the experiment result from their paper and um, try to make a comparison. And our point is that um, even for uh, even for implementing like simple simple operations like simp um, simple I/O operation or file appending, this kind of operation, um, Willow still takes um, a large um, program effort. But I I mean we cannot really make a comparison on our workloads because we cannot mm -hmm. get a try at Willow. And for the second question, so you are asking. Um, comparing with the host-only architecture. By That's correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, um, due to lim time, lim time limitation, we actually do not include in the presentation, but um, the results are in the uh, paper, so definitely you can check the paper yeah. for further Thanks. details. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Uh, I'm Hyungwon Moon from UNIST. Uh, I was wondering if, like, um, you mentioned that you should have, like, uh, send the control, uh, control from direct from the kernel because like the firmware doesn't have any permission check related features. But uh, maybe uh, you could have tried also to offload the permission checks also to the FPGA, which I think will like reduce any latency and could improve the performance. Is there any reason why you like didn't try or you couldn't like offload those uh, permission checks to the FPGA? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, if you really want to upload this part to the PGA, then you basically you need to decode the file system metadata. And it is actually difficult to achieve at FPGA because the implementation would require lots of FPGA resource. And also it is hard to um, be compatible across um, host file systems. So here we make the decision by enforcing that on the host side by leveraging the knowledge of host file system. And because this is more like a one-time effort, so be um, just start um, at the beginning of the computation, you check the permission, and later on, you don't need to do that anymore. So the overhead is actually minimal. Uh, I see. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let's second our speaker again.